I have a message for you. As Uncle Sam would say, I want you to vote. Every eligible American citizen should vote in this election and in every election. Voting is a right and privilege that should not be taken lightly. Adam Grant, an organizational psychologist and an opinion writer, writes about this in his 2016 New York Times opinion article called Don't Like the Candidates? Vote Anyway. His opening words are as follows. To secure the right to vote, Americans have been beaten, jailed, and tortured. Some even died. Yet in the 2012 election, less than 54% of the eligible population turned out to vote. That's 93 million people who didn't bother to weigh in on who would lead their country. Your vote is your voice and your way of telling politicians what is important to you. And it is a choice. Here in the United States, voting is not required by law, which makes this a question of policy. So let's talk about why you should vote and why some people don't vote. Voting is a constitutional right and privilege that many people have fought for over the course of America's entire history. In the original Bill of Rights, the Fourth Amendment gave men the right to vote, but the fight continued after that. After the Civil War, African Americans were given the right to vote with the Fifteenth Amendment, but the fight continued after that. In 1920, women were finally given the right to vote with the Nineteenth Amendment, but the fight did not stop there. Even after the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was passed, many people would say that the fight still continues today. This privilege, therefore, should not be taken lightly, because your vote is your voice. You have a say in government. Lawrence LeDuc wrote in his 2013 Global Social Issues Encyclopedia entry published by Rootledge called Voting and Elections, Voter turnout is an important part of elections and is often thought to affect the quality and stability of a country's democracy. Danielle Ott of Grand Valley State University, in her 2016 Odyssey article, The Importance of Voting in the Primary Election, says, Regardless of the outcome, your vote sends a message, letting politicians know what is important to you. You are making a decision on what matters to you. If you do not vote, you are giving up this decision to others. So don't let others make decisions for you. And don't give up your chance to speak up. So now that you know why you should vote, let's talk about why some people do not vote. Some say that voter registration is not easy. Bethany Brookshire of Science News for Students writes in her 2016 article, Four Reasons Why Many People Don't Vote, To register, someone must go to an official site, such as a library or government office, and fill out paperwork. This can be a difficult process, but it's easier than you think. In fact, here in Maryland, those who go for their learner's permit or driver's license can be registered to vote automatically. It's as simple as that. Brookshire also says, some people just don't care about politics. Voter apathy is a real issue. It's easy for the average American citizen to think as if politicians just do not care about them. W.K. Hull wrote about this in his 2017 American Library Association Choice Book Review called Why Americans Don't Vote, Causes and Consequences. He said, Citizen apathy lowers the number of voters. Many would-be voters are turned off by the extremely negative tenor of modern political campaigns. This negativity from campaigns and ads can lead to voter burnout. I know that it can be hard, and that it definitely is time-consuming to learn about all of these issues. But if you do not vote, you are giving up 
your chance to make a decision of what matters to you. So keep your seat at the table and take the time to get informed on each party's platform and what each party believes in and then you will be ready to vote. Another reason why some people do not vote that is related to voter apathy and voter burnout is that some people do not consider their votes to matter. Out of millions of eligible American voters, a lot of people say that their one little vote does not mean a thing. In my lifetime, there have been two presidential elections that were decided by a small margin of votes. In 2016, Philip Bump wrote about these couple of examples in his Washington Post article headlined, Donald Trump will be president thanks to 80,000 people in three states. The first example is the 2000 election between George W. Bush and Al Gore, where Bush won thanks to a little over 500 votes in Florida. The second example is the 2016 election between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, where Trump won thanks to three states, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Bump writes, but for 79,646 votes cast in those three states, she'd be the next president of the United States. More people live in Gary, Indiana than made the difference in this presidential race. Every vote matters, and every vote counts. As JFK once said, My fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. In conclusion, one thing that you can do for your country is vote in elections. Voting is a constitutional right and privilege that many people have fought hard for you to get. And your vote is your voice because you are making a decision on what matters most to you. It doesn't matter what party you side with. This is a simple civic duty. Don't let others decide for you. Register. Be heard. I want you to vote. Thank you.